I'm Dr. Jack Gilbert. Do you know they dye this green once a year? Huh. Like any urban river, the Chicago River has a reputation for being filthy and dirty, with the common belief that swimming in it is a quick way to get yourself very ill. While this may have been the case back in the day with the uncontrolled dumping of raw sewage, animal and industrial waste, it may surprise you that things have got a lot better. Over the years, the city of Chicago has developed one of the most advanced wastewater treatment processing facilities of any urban environment. That being said, it's still an urban river, and I wouldn't go comparing it to a mountain stream just yet. There's still a lot to do. Scientists at Argonne National Laboratory have teamed up with the Chicago Municipal Water Reclamation District, or MWRD, to do two things. First, we want to develop a new way of observing river pollution, one with greater resolution for identifying bacterial and viral pathogens, including the origin of these pathogens. We've been studying the rivers around Chicago for three and a half years now, sampling and identifying the bacterial makeup in the ecosystem as a whole by monitoring 19 sites every month since March 2013. The good news is the water's pretty clean and the ecosystem is healthy. We've identified bacteria that diversified and fulfilled ecological niches across the waterways in and around Chicago. Surprisingly, we didn't see excessive pollution and it doesn't stop there. The MWRD will be enacting some wide-sweeping reforms of their waste stream by disinfecting the wastewater coming out of their plants and minimising any overflow sewage from entering the river by building an underground network of tunnels and reservoirs to store it when the rains overwhelm the above-ground infrastructure. These systems are coming online now and we're going to see how they affect the ecological health of the river as well as predict the potential implications for human health. The community started talking about disinfection, but the environmental groups wanted some assurance, well, why don't you do this other study, uh, state-of-the-art using DNA testing that can really show us what the pollutant loads are and where they're coming from. So we were real excited that they were here. We we're excited that this new technology exists that really can inform us of things that we've never really looked at before and can inform society as a whole what we should be doing and how we should be addressing water quality issues today. The second thing we want to do at Argonne is to produce a model of the Chicago area waterways that will allow us to determine the health of the water, predict when there might be a problem and even ways to solve those problems. Christina Negri at Argonne National Laboratory is using the data collected over the past few years to model how microorganisms can move around the waterways. I will hope the models will be a useful tool to assess um, what happens to the microbial community in the Chicago River um, based on rainfall, weather conditions, um, decreased or increased flow, and those conditions are probably going to dictate some of the movement of the bacterial communities and microbial communities, uh, their survival, their resuspension from sediments or where they come from, and really trying to understand a lot of uh, issues about them. It's not a simple thing, it's not an easy thing, but obviously the more information we have on this, the, the more informed decision we can make about managing a water resource. Many people in the city are coming together to develop new techniques and strategies to make sure the river stays as clean as possible. But that doesn't mean the river will always be protected. There are many private and commercial wastewater sites that are still dumping into the river, and they do not and are not required to sterilise their output, and collectively they could undermine the city's best efforts to improve water quality above what it is today. Only time will tell. Therefore, it's important that we remain vigilant with research that can help to identify ways to mitigate potentially harmful exposure to people. After all, there are other ways to enjoy this river rather than just dyeing it green once a year.